Hi friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is uh, the Ace Creates podcast where I talk to you about everything that I've been working on, whether it's knit or crochet, um, during uh, either the week or the time since we last uh, checked in together. Uh, it's actually only been a week since we last checked in together. But I have another finished object uh, and I've gotten through quite a bit so I thought I'd update you on everything that I'm working on right now in my making journey. The first thing we're going to talk about is the finished object of the video, which is my Lento. I am super pumped uh, to get this off the needles, I'm super excited to wear it. This is my first ever knitted garment. The Lento is by Jana Hyland. Um, it's a top-down raglan and done in the round. It's completely seamless. So you don't have to seam anything together. Um, the yarn that I used for this project was Ruby and Roses, Soft Rose and Rose Cloud held together um, in the colorway Mistletoe Mixer. I really love this colorway. Um, it was from a Christmas pre-order or a holiday pre-order. Um, what really I loved about this colorway was it screamed Christmas without screaming Christmas. It, I mean, it was Christmassy without screaming Christmas. And so um, the inspiration photo for this yarn was like Christmas lights. And so that's what I really loved about it. I used six millimeter needles for the body. Um, I used four millimeter needles for the neckline and the hem of the body. Um, and then I used three and a half millimeter needles for the sleeves ribbing. If I were to do it again, I would probably just use three and a half throughout. Um, I just like the way the three and a half turned out. So again, if I were to do this again, I would use three and a half for all of my ribbing. Hi friends, this is Amanda, editor Amanda. Um, I forgot to mention that I was making size five of the pattern, which goes for about a 50 inch bust, um, which would have given me five inches of positive ease. That being said, um, oh, and the gauge was supposed to be 15 stitches by 21 rows. That being said, my final uh, measurement was 47 inches, so only two inches of positive ease, and my final gauge was 17 stitches by 23 rows. So you can see my gauge was quite a bit off. It still ended up being a sweater that I could wear. I'm actually quite pleased with just the two inches of positive ease. Um, I think that also has to do with how airy um, the sweater actually is because it's made mostly with six millimeter needles for the body. So I'm okay with uh, it being only two inches of positive ease. I started this project in February. Uh, I cast it on, on February 1st. Um, and I cast off May 21st. I probably would have gotten that done faster when I looked at how many weeks I actually worked on it because I keep track of like everything that I'm working on. Um, I probably only worked on it for about two months, um, but I had about four test projects going on at roughly the same time and I'm not a monogamous maker. So I work on several projects at once. It keeps like my brain active and it keeps it like really entertained. Um, and so, I did not work on this exclusively throughout the four, three and a half months uh, that it took me to finish this project. This is also my second finished object for the month of May. In my last podcast, I went through the Indecision Sampler Shawl uh, that I made. So this is now my second uh, finished object for the month of May. And I'm actually gonna have a third finished object. I won't talk about it right now, and I won't even talk about it this podcast episode. It deserves its own podcast episode because there's a lot of things that I wanna talk to you about, but we'll go into that a little bit later. I used two skeins of the fingering weight from Ruby and Roses and three skeins of the Surrey. I actually have quite a bit of the Surrey left um, and only this much of the fingering. So two skeins of fingering and three skeins of Surrey were used, but um, I haven't weighed it, but it was probably only about two and a half skeins of Surrey. 
Um, so I actually have two more skeins of fingering because I had bought more yarn thinking I was going to need it more of it um, for this project based on the estimates in the pattern. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I might make uh, maybe a matching or a similar type sweater for my daughter so we could have matching sweaters or maybe a hat. Uh, we'll see, but that's what I have left uh, from the project. I am a baby knitter, so this is actually my fifth knitted object ever. Um, I have done, um, and first knitted garment. I have done a couple of shawls slash cowls and then two Oslo hats. Um, and I would definitely say that this pattern, the Lento, is very beginner friendly. The, there are a couple things I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to do German short rows, so that was interesting, but all it took was some Google searching and watching some videos, um, and I thought I got the hang of it, although I would say that when you create the double bar, my tension's not that great, and so sometimes I get a little holes. There's still some mistakes up in here, um, maybe some ga gaping, like where I may have um, like slipped a stitch or missed a stitch or something. Also, I did a provisional cast on and I with crochet, and I didn't. I I was not good at that. Um, I couldn't get the crochet to unwind, <laughs> and so I had to like pick out. It was just, it was a mess. I had to pick it out. But no one else would notice any of the mistakes in here other than me. The only other things that I had difficulty was picking up the underarm um, for the sleeves. Um, I definitely had some gaping. Nothing that I couldn't solve with some duplicate stitching um, that helped cinch it all together. So I don't have the holes anymore. Um, but I don't know if I needed to pick up some more stitches to accommodate, but some of those stitches were stretched underneath, um, between the pickup, what was already like left on the, the spare yarn and what actually needed to be picked up. There were some big, uh, long stitches there. Um, so that's what led to the, uh, the holes. Um, but again, solved it with duplicate stitching. As I said, this is definitely very beginner friendly um, and I would totally make this again. Um, I'm actually thinking about making it again, but without the Surrey, um, either with a sport or DK weight yarn uh, or light DK weight yarn. Um, I would love to make a short sleeve version of it. Um, I know that there's a lot of teas, simple basic teas out there that would do the same thing. But since I'm very familiar with this pattern now, um, I feel very comfortable just doing this again, almost exactly, um, and just uh, doing it short sleeve. Um, I would probably cut it off around here and just do some like a nice chunky ribbing here. Um, I actually have some yarn that I have in mind for it. Um, and I think I could get away with um, two skeins. So we'll see. Maybe not. I, I might have to do some knitting math uh, there, but um, I'm very happy with this project and happy to have my first knitted object under my belt. We are going to take a look at my works in progress now. The first work in progress that I actually have for you is on the blocking mats right now, drying. Um, it is the double take Tunisian tank. Uh, it's practically done. I just have to weave in a few more ends. Um, but I have a lot to say about that project and I wanted it to have kind of its own finished object section of the video. And I didn't want this to be too long of a podcast for you. And so next time we get together, I will definitely be telling you all about the double take Tunisian tank. <music> My next work in progress is the Full Fade Shawl by Jennifer Lovett at Violet Loops on Instagram. And I'm about, I mean, technically by row count, I am 
well over half, but as you can see, I'm getting to the longer rows. I would say I'm probably a third of the way through. Um, I'm just at the point where uh, two skeins meet. And so the premise of this uh, shawl is that it's a faded shawl. You could do three skein fade, you could do a mini skein fade. She gives you a lot of different options um, depending on kind of what floats your boat. Um, and so I chose a three skein fade. The yarn that I'm using is Montana Crochet Nylon Sock. Um, I'll put the colorways up and in the description. Um, I think it's Gallatin, Jefferson, and Madison. Um, it's uh, meant to fade together, so I didn't choose three totally different yarn skeins in my stash. I chose three uh, skeins that I got a while back specifically for uh, like a fade project. Um, and so I am currently doing a three skein fade, just a traditional three skein fade, where I'm fading in from the first color, which is this lighter blue, uh, to a little bit of a darker blue, um, but it still has some light notes. Um, and this is super beginner friendly. So if you're looking for a Tunisian crochet project to get kind of started in Tunisian crochet, this is gonna be it for you. The pattern's gonna come out in mid-June, I think June 13th. So um, I will definitely have links in the future for this project, especially when it becomes a finished object for you. I will plan on releasing a podcast uh, on the day that it goes live. Um, so that way you can get the link for you. But this is totally um, beginner friendly. It's called the Full Fade Shawl because most of the stitching that you're doing in here is the full stitch, the Tunisian full stitch. Um, it's gonna be a boomerang shape uh, by the time I'm done. And I'm really happy with the progress and it's a mindless project for me. And so um, I just hate um, alternating skeins in Tunisian crochet. That will be one of the things that I talk about a little bit in um, when I talk about the double take, um, when it becomes a finished object, you get this nice bouncy edging um, when you're on the, when you're not kind of um, alternating skeins. And then when you start alternating skeins, it just gets a lot tighter and not as bouncy. Um, that's probably a me problem too. I think my tension um, tightens up a little bit when you're trying to kind of float up the different uh, skeins um, so you're not cutting every single time. Um, but this project should be finished in the next two weeks. Uh, it's due in early June for me. Um, so I love testing for Jen. She's got some super great patterns. Um, she actually has uh, a pattern test coming up. I'm not gonna apply for it this time because I'm not interested in sweaters right now, um, but I'm super excited to get this completed. I think it'll look really, really great. The next work in progress that I have for you is the August Tank by Ashley Rivas, Tiny Couch Crochet on Instagram and um, it is a Tunisian crochet tank. Um, you make two panels and you seam them together. Um, I'm really excited about this project. It's made with DK weight yarn. I am using, here's a swatch. I'll hold it this way. I am using Long Dog Yarn Battle for Helms Deep on her Merino DK base. I'm super in love with the texture and the uh, the colorway um, for this, the depth of the blues and then like pop, little tiny pops of uh, like teal green. Um, so this is kind of, I cast it on this week um, and this is kind of flying really fast. I'm actually almost at the point where um, I need to uh, start shaping. And so I thought I would show you where I'm at. So I'm here. So this is one of my panels. 
and I have done uh, almost about the the spot where you start shaping kind of around the bust line to kind of come in underneath your underarm and um, I'm super excited with this texture um, and this pattern and so this yarn creates great stitch definition um, and it's super easy and comfortable to work with. I did block this swatch and I wanted to make sure because when I was making the swatch, it was smaller and I felt like a little bit tighter and not as, um, I guess, luxurious as I would want it. It felt a little stiff. Um, so I did block it to make sure that that was just like, would be taken care of during blocking, which it did. I did meet Gage. Um, I was pretty much spot on. Um, I was about 19 by 19 before blocking and then I was 20 by 20 after blocking. So I was pretty happy that I didn't have to make any modifications or adjustments to the project. Um, and it's a pretty basic pattern. I would say it's beginner friendly. Um, the pattern itself says it's intermediate. You definitely need to have some basic understanding of um, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian purl stitch. So uh, I would definitely have done some projects on with those two stitches before you take on something like this um but i would call it beginner advanced beginner friendly um rather than intermediate um so i'm pretty happy with it my next whip doesn't have any updates i thought i'd just show it to you again but this is the um lynn tank from courtney clark i love tinderbox um, I haven't tackled this. Like I said, I have to kind of go back, get to the pattern and find out where I was in the pattern um, and kind of trudge forward with it. Um, so I just will probably work on that in June, but I did want to let you know that it is an active whip now. It is no longer in the graveyard. The last thing I wanted to update you on today is that I made a change to my summer plans. So in the last episode, which I'll put a link uh, below and above for you, I had talked through kind of my summer plans part one. Um, one of them being that August tank, uh, which I've cast on and a couple others. The one project that I was going to work on the Preston tank, I'm no longer going to work on that. Um, I'll explain a little bit more. Actually, I'll explain now. The reason why I'm not going to do the Preston tank I liked the idea that it was very similar to the double take Tunisian tank. It's made by the same designer. Um, but I had some underarm issues with the double take um, that I think my hole, my underarm hole is a little bit too big for a larger chested person. And since this pattern is very similar, I didn't want to have another tank with a similar issue. So I've decided that I'm going to use the yarn um, that I was going to use for that project on a different project. So this is Yarn Nouveau um, Yak DK in the colorway Lydia. And now I'm going to use it to cast on the Playdate tee. I don't remember the name of uh, the designer, but I will make sure to put it down below. Um, but I thought, uh, I had just enough yarn to do this. I have to swatch. Um, and then I need about 900 or so yards for my size, which I, sh I have just enough as long as I meet gauge. Um, it's a cute, simple raglan tee, but it has some detailing, um, on the raglan. It's not just a simple, I mean, it is a simple raglan but it has like eyelets here um, on either side of the raglan increases, which I thought is a super cute detail. Um, and it's a knitted object. Now that I have my lento off of my needles, I really wanted another knitted project um, to get going so that I always have a knitted project on the needles. And this seemed pretty simple enough. And so I thought, why not? Let's, let's cast it on. Um, so I'm super excited to cast it on um and get the plate 8 tea on my needles that is it for today's podcast episode 
Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving this video a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, friends. I will see you in the next video. Bye now.